Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is a meeting of the Emergency Service Services Grant Program Advisory Committee. Welcome everyone. Barbara and I have prepared an agenda for the meeting with our primary goal to finalize what information we want as part of the grant applications for the next round. But first, we'd like to have members introduce themselves. I'm Dennis Whalen, and I represent the Rural Mountain Fire Protection District West. Uh, Juliet. Good evening, everyone. I'm Juliet Hens. I am a member at large. Rick. Okay, Spacebar wasn't working for unmute, but uh, my name is Rick Scheingold, and I also represent, I've worked with uh, rural fire agencies. Ben? Hi there, I'm Ben Hogan, and I represent uh, search and rescue committees for this committee. Thank you, Ben. Maria? Hi, I'm Maria Kuntz, and I'm representing the accessibility um, community for this committee. And Lynette? Hi, um, I am a represent, I'm just a member at large and I have a lot of county experience, but being just a member at large for this, thanks. And Doug. You're muted, Doug. I'm Doug, I'm a member at large. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Marta, would you like to say a few things? Sure, if you're, um... If you're ready for me, that's great. Thank you, everybody. My name is Martha Lushmi, and I'm one of the Boulder County Commissioners, and I've had the pleasure of meeting some of you along the way in the 2022 actual campaign work to get the emergency service ballot measure passed. So I want to acknowledge that work that y'all have been involved in and, and those of you who've joined us on the way in application process and just really volunteering your time and your expertise. Um, with Barb Halpin, who's our safe staff liaison from the County Commissioner's Office on this. She does special projects for us, so she gets the very unique and fun uh, projects uh, in the Commissioner's Office. So I just ap appreciate all of that, um, your time and your commitment. What I wanna just share, and I know Barb's gonna go over that a little bit more as we uh, work on this particular advisory group and this second group of funding is, to remind us all just to go back to that ballot resolution language, to remind us like, okay, here's how we can focus. And especially when we're talking about it because people are asking um, and, and for all of our tax ballot measures and the funding that we distribute through the county and all the different uh, commissions and advisory boards that people are looking for different opportunities, et cetera. So one, make sure we stay on the ballot resolution language, which I know is where you keep focusing back. Um, also the, the question around like, how do we also distribute the information? So if you have any other ideas or just continue to be asking people um, who might be interested once we get something finalized, et cetera, we'll be encouraging that. And I know this evening's meeting is really to figure out what is that final criteria um, what do you all need? So I appreciate folks continuing to be part of the conversation and just really wanted to appreciate the work that's involved and the, the extra time and additional time um, that y'all have committed to make sure that we can transparently um, support community members, support volunteers and address the funding opportunity with emergency services ballot measure, not just now, but long-term. So the work that you're doing, I just want you all to hear the work that you're doing is gonna be helpful to the groups that come along later down the road and in the future that are able to use this funding, but also the other committees. So um, thank you for all of that work. So I just really wanted to be here and um, say thank you and appreciate the work. And I'm gonna stay on and just listen for a little, little while, but. Um, let Barb and, and Dennis lead. So thank you so much for all of that you're doing. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much, Marta, for your words. I was just wondering if the committee members have any questions of Marta or uh, any comments about your work so far on this committee. Looks like we're still having some people get on. I see that Doris came in under Maria's name again. So if uh, Doris could change her name. <laughs> Uh, Barb, I don't have a hands up button. Sorry. <laughs> you don't. Go ahead. Right. Go jump in there, Rick. My my question is, um, 
for that first round of funding, did you get all the information you needed and was it in a, in a, in a format that worked for you? Thank you for that question. And, and I have a little more, um, maybe a little more insight than if you ask that to the full board. And I say that because um, Barb and I've been working, you know, side by side as well in the commissioner's office and have had some additional um, meetings. So we were able to work with our attorney, et cetera. What you all came up with and the rationale and the questions that I saw that you were asking to make sure that you were meeting the resolution language and also um, reviewing applications was fantastic. Um, so I really appreciate the thoughtfulness and, and mindfulness that I heard that Barb shared in regards to just the process that you all went through and asking even the board to come back and give some, like, some feedback. Um, so yes, um, and I just want to acknowledge, I know there was some additional work um, before you made your final recommendations. Anybody have anything else to start with? Uh, Barb has the agenda ready to post, I think. I do. I was just responding to somebody who's trying to join us. Um, okay. Let me share my screen. We will go ahead. And... So we've gone through the first slide, which was an introduction by Commissioner Lochamine. And I wanted to then say that um, our focus tonight is going to be to finalize the grant application for our second round of grants. As the committee and Marta were just talking about, we finished our first round of grants um, the end of last year, and those were awarded in January of this year for fire districts. And now we're moving on to our second round, which we've already had one meeting about. And we solicited some input from the uh, committee members in the last two weeks as a homework assignment and got some feedback on some ways that we can uh, change this next application to both fit the new uh, the, the groups that will be applying for grants this round and also to uh, make up for some what we thought were were improvements from the last round. So we're going to dig very narrowly and deeply into the application tonight with the hope that we can finalize it and get that new grant kicked off, grant round kicked off next week. So we've got that on our agenda tonight. Um, I think we're about halfway there. So first thing I wanted to do, and, and I had owed the committee from last time, a scope of who would be eligible to apply four grants this round. And with the help of Commissioner Lochamine and Sheriff Johnson and our attorney's office, and the reminder to go back to the ballot language and, and follow that, you know, to the link to the letter, we have decided that this second round would be open to the following three items. Capital expenses, including facilities and equipment, or operational costs of search and rescue organizations that can assist Boulder County in responding to emergencies. So that's the first criteria. The second is trail and trailhead safety services to increase emergency response and public safety in Boulder County. And then this new idea, we were sort of toying with the idea of what about organizations that might come to us with really interesting ideas. It may not be a funding request that's specific to their organization, but they could come to us and say, hey, you know, we're out on the trails or we do search and rescue and there's a pilot program we think, or a program we really would like to see the county implement. Um, we could then take that idea and either consider it as one of the grant proposals and if it meets the criteria and it is a fundable effort that we feel like can be accountable for just like any other grant, we could proceed that way. Or the committee could recommend that Boulder County kind of on its own work with other departments in the county to implement a pilot program. Uh, so there's sort of this, it kind of captures those, what about really good ideas that don't specifically meet um, the criteria? Does anyone have any questions on that? I'll stop there for a moment. 
I actually have a question on the first one, just thinking about if I remember correctly, the tax um, initiative already sets aside money for capital for some search and rescue groups, or at least one. So is 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 this clear enough to kind of keep those interests separate? Yes, I think it's a really good idea. And I think in this way, we mean capital is in a piece of equipment. So there is the building that's being built as, as a separate part of the extended of the emergency services tax that will be used for search and rescue. But there are capital expenses that could be, you know, just like in the fire protection districts, a an, an ATV to be able to get out and, you know, do rescues off the trail or equipment that a group might need like ropes or you know things that that are physical in nature that they could purchase um we decided to leave facilities in because if there was a request for some sort of building whether it could be a rent i think you know there's there's sort of a smaller scale version of what is already being accounted for elsewhere in the sales tax and that I helps know, thanks commissioner lochaming wants to jump in and help me out on that but the thinking was that we would open this up rather than really narrowly define this first round we kind of open it up to see what what is really out there in terms of requests And then the second one is, again, pretty open to ideas and agencies or organizations who specialize in these areas or have an interest in specializing in these areas. And as we'll go into in more detail, we'll just have to make sure that those organizations are legitimate, sustainable, and able to carry out the grant. Rick, did you have your hand up? I did, and I'm not sure what category this fits into. Up in the mountains, we have a lot of dispersed site camping, and you know, so and it crosses a, a lot of lines. There's Boulder County open space, federal lands, state lands, and you know, there's a great need for education. Um, you know, people will camp without bringing enough water. They'll start on hikes without the right amount of equipment, uh, and I'm not sure where that would fit in this. I think that's an excellent question. I think it relates directly to safety for people out recreating. Um, Can I jump in real quick, Barbara? Yes, please do. And, and I'd love to hear other folks' response to that question too. But for me, as you all are looking and talking to other organizations and other people about this, I think for me, that could potentially fall under two or three depending on who the partners are, who the organizations are. I, I'll share that it was just out here in Longmont um, about a month ago, invited to a um, Boy Scouts event for the, and I should know the name, but it's the highest tier that you can reach as a young person. Um, and, and they had done Eagle a project. Scout. Thank you. That they, um, who was celebrating an Eagle Scout award. And there was a partnership there with on Boulder County Open Space, with youth, with specific to trails. And so something like that, And we, when we're thinking about who else needs to learn about this space and who else is maybe already doing some of these projects. So just, um, I think that's an opportunity where it could, in my mind, go either two or three, depending on how it's presented. Thank you, Commissioner. Lynette, do you have something you wanna say? I just have maybe something to bounce off of what Rick said, and then I have, kind of a basic question and it may be dumb, so I apologize first off, but there are a lot of trailhead safety services that are volunteer with an agency that's in existence. So like with the Forest Service or with Boulder County Parks, um, would they be eligible for this for volunteer equipment, um, CPR classes, that type of stuff, or is this really focusing more on outside of an agency? You bring up a couple of good points there. I do think it is open to organizations that may have only volunteers or have, you know, a nonprofit that might have one or two staff and then volunteers just for those things you mentioned, first aid training, 
Uh, as long as there is some directed purpose that it would be used for the benefit of open spaces and public lands in Boulder County, I don't think that we want to just arbitrarily say, you know, we'll, we'll provide first aid training to anybody who wants it. I think there has to be sort of this idea that um, in order to better the safety opportunities out there uh, in Boulder County, there's a there's a sort of a plan forward. But in terms of whether Boulder County, I do think there's already part of the sales tax that is going to, you know, extra rangers and support on Boulder County open space. Um, but I don't think that would preclude uh, other organizations from applying for a grant, again, if they if they can justify how that money would be used that applies to our ballot language. And I do know that since we met last time, uh, the county attorneys in office and the commissioner and sheriff and I talked about how instead of trying to estimate and narrow the scope for this ahead of time, we are going to conscientiously open it up wider. And that does mean that this committee will be asked to wrangle some of these questions you're having, but once we have applications at hand. So all of this discussion and all of these conversations will be really valuable uh, when we start looking at what what organizations are applying and what they're asking for. So I do think that this grant is going to be more robust in that sense, that we're going to, you know, have to have to really have those kinds of conversations about what makes most sense, especially if it's a competitive pool and we have, um, you know, our the requests far ex exceed the amount of money that's going to be available. So I just think it's important that we we kind of ask these questions ahead of time, but also know that, and I think Doris had said this last time, we don't know what we're going to have until we have that, and then we'll be working with, with what we have from there, if that makes sense. We don't we know do, what we don't know. We don't know what we don't know yet, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, but it's, you know, the exciting part of that is that we really are going to try to reach as many organizations as we can and flesh out some flesh out some new ideas that um you know we just may not be able to anticipate at this point of, of interest or what people may apply for i'm going to jump in really quick on that too barb thanks everybody for the questions my one of the pieces we talked about in our last meeting and internally was about meeting with boulder county parks and open space to just hear where they're seeing gaps, and I'm thinking from 2020 to now and the, the increase in usage, et cetera, where they might be seeing some gaps that they really are looking for some help. So they might be really looking for a, a something in that number three range, I don't know, or the others. Um, and also any suggestion they have, of maybe people who've presented ideas to them in the past and they didn't have capacity, um, meaning didn't have staff to, to run or support. And so, um, so my hope is that we'll be able to bring some of that back for you too to consider when you're looking at applications. And we have the sheriff's office's volunteer to come on as a subject matter expert when we start looking at these applications. We could invite parks and open space to do the same in terms of where, you know, there if 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 the committee's interested kind of in their take on um some of these requests and if we've seen if we've seen them before if we've had success with them before um that kind of feedback maria did you want to jump in yeah i uh, was just wanting oh we're looking for doors oh. I, think. Oh, do I, I think have... there's i think there's two of us with my name up because of the way i shared oh the is link. that kate up there okay oh. no kate, I, yeah, you... I changed my name doris did yeah no but name. i think kate might need to I do need... a right click and change your name yeah. Uh, and that's fine. I just looked at the name when I then I see that it's clearly it's Kate. <laughs> there you are. It's okay. Uh, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. I, I just was gonna say I would really welcome the opportunity to hear from um, OSMP on like what their needs are or what they would would think would be helpful um, in terms of of um, additional rescue resources of just you know, whether it's 
like trail worker staff, whether it's, um, you know, frequent flyers on the trails or whatever it is. But I, I think that sounds like a lovely idea. I think we should do that. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll take that back to our internal committee and we'll figure out the best way to do that. Anyone Maria? else? Maria? Yeah. Yeah, I did have a question. Uh, Marta, I might have missed part of what you said earlier, but were you suggesting that youth in programs like Scout could potentially request funds through this? I yes, I mean, and, and yeah. when I say that, I think I think we, my hope, my goal, and some of you haven't got the opportunity to work with me on other advisory boards yet, but that is the question around like who else might. Um, mm -hmm be considering some of those projects. And I just know that I was a previous teacher. So that's always in my mind of there's all these different youth programs that are very interested and would love to be out in Boulder County open space and are doing some of these projects. So think outside the box. Yeah. Um, and let's be open to, I was really happy, Carrie Doyle, who's the attorney that's helping us on this, um, worked with Barb and I on number three. And so, yeah, I think it'd be fabulous. So thanks for asking me. I'm an assistant scoutmaster in a local troop, so I have a big network there. So that hadn't even crossed my mind to share this information. So I think, you know, as we get into sharing the possibility, sharing the opportunity with folks, that really opened my mind to think differently. Excellent. Thank Great. you. And I have to apologize to you as well, because I couldn't remember the Eagle Scout name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's also Girl Scouts, so maybe Gold Awards, like there are other organizations, so I think, yeah. Well, and in Longmont, ours, fun fact, is actually men and, or boys and girls in the same program, which is, I thought was very interesting. I learned a lot. That's true. That's true. That's fairly new. It's good to see. Okay. And Barb, I'm just going to share a comment that was in the chat. Okay. Um, um, Julie, there now. it says, I think emergency services was brought up as well. It'd be helpful to hear their feedback as well on the needs they see in the county. And Julia, do you want to, can you help me clarify what, uh, are you talking about a specific agency for emergency services or when you, that question about emergency services? Uh, I, I thought that's what you had brought up and maybe I misheard. I thought you were talking about Boulder County Sheriff's emergency services. Okay. I think we were, I was just talking about, you know, internally who we've been speaking with. But gotcha. That okay. We would, um, but throw we want to throw a wide net uh, beyond kind of our our own organization and, and the groups that we frequently partner with. So just as we were talking about, there's opportunities for Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, perhaps other U.S. Forest Service, um, and and we talked last time about some social hiking clubs or you know volunteer search and rescue, cross country ski groups. I mean, there really are from what we're learning, um, probably a, a fairly broad audience that, that might be interested and may not know that this grant program exists. So I think that's gonna be our our best challenge and um, really fun and unique part of the second round is trying alternative ways to uh, to our traditional means of getting, out, getting the word out to people. Are we ready to move on? Any more questions about sort of these three areas? Okay, seeing none. So now if we can, um, I summarized the areas that in the second, second round of applications that we still need to sort of go through tonight. Um, and I'm, so I'm going to go off of this screen and I'm going to pull up the application. It's going to get a little messy. It's going to get a little in the weeds. But I think that this committee has already had a chance individually to look at the application. I think we're probably in a really good place to then hit some of those areas that there's still not um, sort of a concrete decision on. And very quickly, they're the ones that are shown on the screen. We need to talk about the financial data we want to get to get I, I, an idea of how stable the organization is, how uh, able they might be to work with a, a grant of any amount. Um, there was a suggestion about Norse narratives to support a budget and, you know, maybe what does that look like or how do we put that into words? Then we talked about looking at an organization's ability to support the grant and their own sustainability and long-term ability to maintain that piece of equipment or program. 
We talked about scaling a request. If we can, if we have a competitive pool and we don't necessarily, we need to ask some organizations to maybe take less than what they've asked for, you know, how does that look? And then uh, follow up on our conversation last time about inclusion and equity considerations as part of this grant round. So with that, I'm going to move to a different... Barb, while you're shifting... Yeah, please go. Screens, I just want to... I'm going to have to jump off to get into my next um, virtual meeting. So I just want to say thank you again. And, and I also want to share for folks who don't know, we have 34 of these commissions and advisory boards at Boulder County. And so there's a there's staff liaisons, there's volunteers uh, really all around the county doing all kinds of great work. And so I just want to welcome you into that pool of amazing people in Boulder County. And I think exactly what Barb just said, like this is a new one and this is a very unique opportunity. I was running the Metro Area Football District advisory group um, last year also. And that just means when the Denver Broncos sold, they gave money to folks who had spent money on that tax. Um, but that was the first board we were able to bring youth in on the board. Mm -hmm. um, so so we're, we're trying to do things differently. And I just want you to all know that you're part of that um, at the county. So I'm still super excited about it and just want you to um, hopefully get some of that encouragement because you're going to have some tough decisions later. So have some fun now. <laughs> um, and then collectively, you'll have some great relationships to be able to ask some tough questions. And, and the best scenario would be we get the word out and we have a lot of people interested in how to use this and we set up a great process. So appreciate you all. Thanks, Barb. We'll talk to you all later. Thanks. Thanks, Marta. And, you know, Dennis, Marta brings up a really good point that we haven't talked about yet, but which was whether this committee wants to find a time to meet in person. Um in some time in the near future, because it's we've had one group kick off at the very beginning, and most of us got together. I think two people couldn't make it, and then we've been virtual ever since. And it, with Marta saying how it's difficult sometimes to work through all these challenges, you know, we want to give people. It's easier to get on virtually because we're all live spread out throughout the county, but. Um, we did want to entertain the idea of having, you know, one meeting maybe every year um, in person to kind of just get that ability to to sit in the same room around the same table and kind of talk through these things a little less electronically. I don't know if anybody has any opinions on that. Well, I'll give you my opinion. I think it's a great idea. I'm always a fan of meeting in person, so. Right. Well, let's maybe look for one of the an opportunity coming up to see if, if folks, I know it's hard because evenings are, it, it's a struggle for us to get on uh, the same call at the same time, but I do think it might be nice now that we've worked through a first round and talked about a lot of these things that we have another in-person meeting. So I'll look into that. I, I would suggest sooner rather than later, because I think we're all going to get really busy once it's summer. I know for me, I'll be traveling a ton, so um, spring might be optimal. Great, great. Well, and Dennis and I talked, we've we've sort of moved up the grant uh, deadlines, and to, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but we're hoping to be able to wrap up the second round by early to mid-May, and then basically give you the months of June and July off completely. We'd probably want to meet at the end of August to kick off the fire district um, grants, but the whole idea is to try to get this round completed before y'all head off into your summer vacations. Okay, so this is, you, you all saw this when I sent it out two weeks ago. Um, we're getting very close, I think, to some of the, the stumbling blocks we had two weeks ago. And one was we've now defined sort of what grants, uh, what people can apply for. And we just went over all of that. Um, we are this, again, these are very broad categories. We're not limiting it to mountain and rural as we did with the fire districts. Um, if a municipality were to come forward and say, you know, like city of Louisville, we found a real gap that we need to fill on our trails, this committee could decide whether 
the city has enough money in its own resources to take care of that, or if it's, um, you know, something that would benefit members of Boulder County. So I think, again, it's just, we're throwing a wide net, but it's also the first time this grant has been offered. So we're hoping that those two things will kind of balance themselves out and we won't get inundated and overwhelmed with too many grant requests. Um, I changed these around based on what folks provided in their in their homework assignments. One thing that we wanted to talk about is, and I'm looking for a better word here for capabilities, but something on the lines of improving emergency response efficiency for either search and rescue or trail and trailhead safety services. So if anybody has a good word choice there. I know there was a lot of discussion about whether the prioritization of certain communities in Boulder County, that that seemed kind of problematic if we tied that right back to the ballot language. Um, I know that there's sort of, there's still a, a, a strong value in Boulder County to make sure that we're representative and inclusive of all communities in Boulder County. So that E is more about to keep that on the you know front front stove that as we as we go and market this program to groups in the county that that we might do it in a way with an open mind that there may be there may be safety concerns and risks that we're not aware of from a traditional able bodied go out and you know hike a trail perspective um, and I don't know that we want to get into that more deeply tonight, but I, I'm hoping that that kind of addresses that that concern about being too specific about calling out um, certain populations. And I know these these are kind of difficult things to speak about, and I think this is again, if we were sitting around a table, maybe it might be a better time to to dive into that conversation a little more deeply. Um, but I wanted to bring it up tonight because we talked about it quite a bit last time. And then I just took out F because up at the top here, it says to enhance mm -hmm. these things in Boulder County. So that was just repetitive. So can we go back to B and uh, come up with a better word? Uh, hey, I have a great idea or an idea at least. Um, <laughs> I'm all for uh, efficiency in language. I don't think we need efficiency and capabilities. I think it can just be <laughs> enhances emergency response of search and rescue and trail. Everybody else in favor of that? You're here, here. Love it. Yes. There it goes. Okay. Thanks, Thank Kate. you. Yep. <laughs> I love our, our, our good, good editors here. Okay. Um, any other questions or concerns about the those one, two, three, four, five items there. Okay. And I'm always up for wordsmithing. So if you, if anybody else wants to hack away, please let me know. There wasn't much in, in these first couple areas. I had some good suggestions about improving the contact information. We did in this last round, we ran into a situation where we couldn't actually get a hold of the agency's um, the people who had applied. So I am going to work to improve that and make sure I get two contacts with their information um, and their preferred method of being contacted. Um, this one, the organization data, nobody gave me any feedback on this. And as I was looking at it, I felt like perhaps we asked too many questions here or maybe some that didn't were not not necessarily necessary. So is anybody willing to offer whether you think these should stay as is? Was silence just agreement that these should all stay in place or did nobody really take the time to look at all of these? Well, I'll jump in and say the earlier conversation makes me look at these differently now. I think because it says organization data, um, in my mind, I think it's got to be some sort of formal group, right? So if we think about a group of scouts or maybe a club at CU or a, a more informal group, they might get tripped up by this and not understand that they could apply. So I think 
my question would be, what are we actually trying to understand? I think you've kind of put that in the email beforehand, Barb. Like, what do we act, what do we need to know? Um, very good point. And maybe it's just a caveat, like, uh, these may not all apply to you. Please answer the ones that do. Yeah, I like that idea of making yeah. them optional, each one particularly optional, and yeah, making it. Go ahead, Dennis. I, I like Maria's suggestion to say uh, about these are optional, uh, fill in the ones that complete the ones that apply to your organization or, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Or, and maybe, uh, you know, have an other category. So if they. Yeah want to provide some kind of nar narrative. Yeah. I think, I think part of the goal is just to be sure it's a, a real genuine somehow organization. So we don't give money to somebody that just disappears. <laughs> or wasn't real to begin with. <laughs> yeah. They made up some organization and gave themselves a name and whatever. That's right. Yes, Ben. Um, yeah, I think this is all good. Uh, for organizations that are established, you know, this this should be stuff that they should be able to fire at us real quickly. And this gives us an idea of a group like RMR or BES of, of what they're like. Um, and then I, I like the idea of having it optional. And then just to make it very clear to us on the committee, um, yeah, maybe like a, a 50 word limit, 100 word limit uh, blurb saying, if these don't apply to you, explain to us, um, you know, in, in three sentences, what your organization is, just to make it very clear to us so we're not guessing in a month, you know, is this a scout group? Is this someone's club? And it just tells us very clearly what it is. Perfect. Got it. Eight. Um, I think we probably want to go back to the commissioners on this because I do think that they're probably going to require an EIN or a tax number for any money given. So I think... I think we are going to need to keep it as an organization, but the good thing is like most scouts or, you know, even like my kids Nordic group is a 501 C three. Right. So um, it, it shouldn't trip them up, but the informal groups are, are likely not going to qualify for this money if they don't have a tax number. Uh, that's a very good point. You're right. We have governments have very, Strong preferences to to making sure that an organization has a tax number before we can pay them. So should yeah. we be asking for that? Um, we ask for it if we award a grant to them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And they can I, run I, out. They can run out and get one fairly quickly. Yeah, I'm not sure that would fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So these are all really good discussion points because, you know, as much as we want to be open to great new ideas. I think if they are not formed in some regard that they have a tax number and that, or, you know, nonprofits have them as well, um, that, that we might have to consider them in that third bucket of a interesting project, but not necessarily a group that we could award money to. I think too, if we get into looking at budgets and actuals and P&L, like they're going to, if they don't really exist, they're not going to be able to provide that. That would be a flag. Agreed. Agreed. Because this is not this does not preclude the idea of of the financials we're going to ask for. This was in addition to the financials. Um, and I would like to play devil's advocate for just a moment for a new organization that might see this as an opportunity to solve a problem that exists or fill a gap that's currently there. I don't want to disqualify people who have great ideas and may and can get their act together. And if they can get a FEIN or a, 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 an identification number, I'd I'd still like to consider them fully um, if they're filling a need. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. An EIN takes like a year. It, I mean, the five hundred one c three process is not quick. So I I don't think we want to be reward awarding money to an organization that's going to then take a year to get their their finance their get their papers in order so to speak and actually um, i know of one organization we've been i've talked about it with the sheriff it's the mounted patrol group that's very interested in, in uh, partaking in this grant but they have never organized to the point where they have a tax number so 
that's probably one that we know we will be wrangling with. Um, I think an LLC is really quick to get. I don't. I, I agree with Kate that getting your whole, yourself set up as a as a nonprofit it has quite a a lengthier time frame. So we have determined that you need to be a non for profit for this money. No, I'm just I'm thinking I'm just thinking aloud. I think because I don't think we've determined yet. I think it's one of those things we'd have to address. If an organization comes to us and they're not organized in a fashion that makes it easy to fund. Now we do have circumstances where we could fund them through an outside agency. Um, so I think we have tools if we, if we want to work through like the community foundation to fund something. Um, it just gets more complicated. And I think that's one of those things we just can't decide tonight. Because they will, as somebody mentioned, I'll need to go back to the attorney's office. And yeah. um, and I think we should wait and see if we get applications that don't fit the mold and then determine how we're going to address those. But point noted, I got I got you down, Rick. It's devil's advocate. Okay. Um, so then moving on, let's see, we had some comments about the project description. I think this came in before we were able to define the kinds of projects that could apply. Um, so the, the question on top was a specific question that came in through the, um, through the homework assignment. I think we've defined the scope tonight, and again, it's we, we're steering in the direction of broader and wider than narrower. So B4, I thought this was a very interesting comment. It was about, as applicants identify shortfalls they hope to fill, should we ask for volume of current or projected events that might be supported with this funding? And I don't know who, I can't remember who actually put this in, but if that person might want to help explain kind of what was meant by that in terms of, is it that they- that was me again. Oh, okay, jump in, Rick. Uh, what I was trying to figure out was, is there a way to, you know, develop, to, to see kind of a scope of what happens. For instance, in fire agencies, you might have 20 or 50 calls a year, 80% uh, medical. If if someone says, hey, you know, we have this situation where we do these rescues, or, hang on, I lost an earbud. One moment. <laughs> happens to the best of us. If we, you know, if we have a situation where they say, hey, we do, uh, you know, we're thinking that if we could have this equipment, we could do horse rescues. Well, how many horse rescues a year do you think there would be? Is what I'm trying. I'm trying Got to figure it. out if there's a way to identify scope to the level of response that the money would buy. Yeah, I like the way you're thinking along those lines, and I think it came up too when we talked about that agency coming into Gold Hill last time, and they they did a very specific rescue of a vehicle. Great to have that resource, um, but do we have any idea how often those? If we if we were going to provide funding, would they be called on once a year? Or once every two years, five times a year. I mean, so are you asked, are you trying to get at having them project kind of how often or how needed this service is? Well, and I would argue the other side as well, which is I'm not sure if that really matters. That's mm -hmm. why I brought it up was mm -hmm. for a discussion because it may be that, you know, you save one life or you rescue one person, that's plenty. Yeah. How do others feel about that? in terms of getting at that from a question standpoint. I might I jump in and, oh, I'm sorry. Go Lynette. Uh, thank you. I might jump in and wrangle that a little bit. I think having, having kind of done that work, it's, it is always hard to say, or you're going to get called out on some weird wing ding call. You're like, well, I never thought I'd have to go rescue a horse. Um, 
sometimes it's really hard, I think, to think ahead and know exactly what it is you might be doing. But, you know, again, maybe this is just that box, that 250 words, you know, if it's a new idea or something that um, happened in another county that people talk about, you know, I think that's a great spot for that to go. And, um, you know, like the Colorado four by four rescue folks are up quite, I would say almost fairly often in the, in the winter, at least they would probably have numbers, but maybe there are certain vehicles that they don't know how to pull out. Or, you know, I think, um, I like the devil's advocate thinking, and I like the conversation thinking. And I think that 250 word limit place was perfect for them to maybe kind of put that in, in writing, if that makes sense. Is there a additional question we could ask under B4 that might flesh out some additional interest or have people give us some more description that might be very valuable? You mean something like the expected use for this, expected amount of use for this equipment or something like that? I'm looking for some committee members to respond. <laughs> um, do we even want to ask, what is your experience? Um, responding in situations or something? I don't know. Um, well, it seems to... like a justification for the request, right? Like what is sort of what's the scope that you see? Um, I think someone who sees this question and does it well will understand that they can say like, this is the data I have about what has happened and this is how I think it'll have an impact. Um, I don't know that it's necessary to spell out a specific way to answer it again, because we don't want to like pen people in, but I think there's a really important part in asking about, you know, how significant is the sort of challenge you're trying to address. And I think some of that's going to be like how we review the application. Like, oh, I didn't know this was such an issue. And they think they're going to be able to solve 80% of the problem with this solution. That's amazing. Yeah, I like the idea of getting just wrestling on a little bit more, teasing out some more information about this. Um, again, does any, do you, I've heard the idea of trying to get at the significance or commonality of of being in a position to provide these services is that is there some group agreement around that? Or... Thanks, okay, Maria. So that sorry. really uh, dialed in exactly what I was trying to head toward. I appreciate that. Yeah. Did you want to rephrase that? It was it was along the lines of significance. No, Maria said it beautifully. I, have to I check know, and I'm hoping she will repeat it. I don't know what I said. Um, there was something about how significant. I think how significant is the challenge you're addressing, and how will your proposed solution address that? Perfect. Exactly. And then it's our job to read these and try to assess and weigh them against each other. So that's perfect. Okay. How significant is the challenge you're present, and how? Do you address? How will your project program address that? Okay. I think it's kind of getting at the, yeah, I can, there are lots I of can... great ideas, but Perfect. which ones will have the most impact? Okay. I, I'll wordsmith it later, but I think hopefully I captured there on the screen what, what you're getting at. Okay, excellent. So we've talked of 
bit in the past about sustainability. I think this was also, though, trying to get at the not only the the program or project, but the organization itself. Um, we haven't talked about the financial reports, but maybe here is a good time to stop and, and kind of go down to that area and say um, that the suggestions have been a current balance sheet, annual budget, and um, the income statement, I think, was also. Yeah, that's I had that. Okay. Does that pretty much sum up what others think is reasonable? And again, if it's an organization is already functioning as a formal organization, they should have these uh, right. e available. Okay. So then do we, if, if we are going to look at those, those documents, can we ascertain the stability of the organization? I think that came up more in our scoring than it does. We don't really have a question that gets at it. Are we, do you feel like we can proceed without digging more deeply into that question in the application? If we have the financials to help us with the scoring. Um, digging into my so a past background as a grant writer, there were frequently questions. I think this is where that staff size comes into play. Mm -hmm. So you could have a financially stable organization, but the human resources aren't stable or they're unpredictable. Um, so there's no maybe perfect solution that we can guarantee they're stable, but you know, you, you could look at, um, you know, a qualitative question supporting like you know describe the the staff I don't know describe the staffing and who will be which staff members will or team members will be responsible for uh, utilizing these funds if we wanted to dig into it more I'm, I'm taking notes. I'm, that's why I'm being quiet. But Rick, you had your hand up too. Yeah, Rick. So these basic um, financial forms that I mentioned and asked for uh, should be fairly simple for any organization that's acting, let's call it professionally. Um, you know, one could put it together for their personal use or one could do it for a business. You know, just having it and just being able to see what how they categorize things and how organized they are does tell a bit about how they might manage and organize the money they'd be receiving. Um, yeah. We're not necessarily going to be able to determine if a um, an organization is, you know, fiscally sound or if it takes care of, you know, its equipment or its people. Uh, but at least it's a step toward, you know, do they treat their books and their money professionally? Others agree with that. I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Good. One thing we don't ask is how long they've been around. I don't know if that's something we might be interested in asking up here in, in organization data is how long they've been in existence. It does then cut into that idea that if a new a new group wants to form to do an idea. Go ahead, Ben. I think it's a helpful question for us, and I think that it shouldn't detract from that we do want to fund new ideas. It helps us identify something new, or is this something that has been trying to, you know, they've been trying to save us all the same problem for 20 years, and it's not really been effective. So in the same way, I think it actually helps us identify, oh, these are new novel ideas, or these are new novel um, programs, and, and that could also give us information as the committee, as the um, an extra data point. So I, I don't think it would um, hurt early organizations. Okay. I did add it. Can can the word people tell me if that's supposed to be an E or an A for existence? <laughs> My spell check doesn't... Okay. That's okay. correct. It's all right. It's all right. Um, okay. Looks like Kate might have a follow-up. Okay. Kate? Um, just to go back to the financials for a second, I kind of like the idea of having the financial reports as just like a box check. Um, because it's very 
inter like it's very hard to tell from a profit and loss or a balance sheet other than you know what they're doing with their money and how much money they have but i think something that might actually help us as evaluators is a question along the lines of how do you manage um your grants just like a hmm. simple question of like how do you manage how do you financially manage your grants because an organization that has their their stuff together will say something along the lines of like, oh, we have, you know, um, an account code for each of our grants and we use that to um, code all of our expenses and and that's how we track that. And I think that that would give us that more qualitative look that like, lens that we're looking for. Whereas, at least for me, I wouldn't feel comfortable of unless I knew an organization really well, a profit and loss is not going to tell me much, if that makes sense. Um, if I know the organization well, or like have like a multi-year history or, you know, at least 18 months, I can tell something from that. But um, I, I guess I would prefer those to be like things we have, but not necessarily how we evaluate them. I mean, I think, especially if we're look, going to be looking at a lot of applications, having somebody summarize that it might be easier than going through all of those financials as well. Um, just to bring us back to the thought that we could have new and innovative ideas, I think the way the question phrase, I, I really like that idea and that question. I think it's a great, great, uh, a great idea. But to, again, make it so that, like, how do you or how would you, you know, if okay. this is new and you haven't done it, what's your plan? Um, okay. How would they or how, how, how do, do they plan to? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm wondering if the way I've stated that second part is almost a little too open. So how do they plan to manage, manage. the money around it? Kind of um, track. Man the yeah. Yeah, I would say manage or track, um, you know, the, the grant funds or. Yeah, the grant award funds. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll add a question that gets in into that and let them kind of tell us if they if they have a track record of working with grants or if this is really a brand new idea to them. Okay. Um, again, going just briefly going back to V5, I think our idea here is to make sure that they, whatever they're asking for has the ability to be completed with the request that if it's a two-year request, I guess they need to build that into a one-time request. Um, does, does anyone think we need to go deeper than that? I think we cover it. Barb, mm -hmm. Barb, somewhere in the process, does it mention that if you are a recipient, if you receive funds, that you're disqualified for a year? Do they know that it's a two-year cycle if they need if they're looking to re, re resubmit an application? You know, we made that um, a rule for the first round of grants. I'm not actually sure it's going to apply. I'll have to go back and get, before I send out the grant application, I'll make sure I get a, an answer to that and and include it with the guidelines. If, if in fact, we are only going to allow one one time every, you know, every other year, grant award, then I'll make sure that that's known up front. Does that, does that solve that question? Yes, I, I didn't know it. I didn't know if it was a yeah, standing I was order or if it's- Yeah, I was assuming it is, but, you know, fire districts was a little bit more because we knew we wanted to fund as many needs in, out there as we could for the specific, you know, there's, there's only a limited number of fire districts. And so we wanted to make sure that the money was spread around before we had, folks coming back to the following year, but I'm not sure that that applies in this case um, because it's a wide open field. So I'll get some clarification on that. 
Okay, I think the rest of these were fine. So this was an interesting discussion about scaling. Um, you know, we want to try to get at, could they still complete a project or do the, the most good, even if we could offer them less money? But I know from an applicant standpoint, if you ask them, can you use less money, they're going to feel like, oh my gosh, if I say yes, they're automatically going to give me less money. Um, so maybe it's those of you who've had experience with grants before, is there a way that we can uh, sort of reach a middle point here so that we can address and they can address the question honestly about partial funding? And Barb? Yeah. My other part of that, I'm sorry, it was me again. It was you. <laughs> uh, uh, was also talking about the possibility or the ability to necessarily, if possible, to scale up. If multiple agencies are asking for similar things, could they partner right. up and scale up the project? Um, not just, you know, is there a possibility of scaling down, but is there a way to also, you know, spread this great idea um, mm -hmm. a, little, a little bit with a wider net? So my experience in this, yeah, thanks. my experience in this regard is that um, if you're applying for a grant to a foundation, for example, there's often a program manager who's talking to people before they apply. So they're, they're already starting to see some of these possibilities and they can talk to folks or maybe the, you send the application in and then the program manager calls the you know development director, or grant officer and grant writer and says, well, you know, this is what I'm seeing and has a conversation. That's, mm -hmm. that's my experience with those. I don't know okay. how realistic or feasible that is for us. And I hear the concern. People would probably be hesitant to say they could do less. Now that I don't think that excludes us from saying, huh, this is a really good idea. We see some similarities in talking to groups. It would make it a little more complicated and time consuming to probably like process and get money out the door. Yeah. Um, but again, I, you know, is there a way to put in, really emphasize that or give that information in the application sort of narrative up front mm -hmm. that we may, if we see similar needs, we may approach organizations and suggest they work together or, um, right. yeah, I don't, I don't know who would do that outreach. Love, so, love that, especially the proactive approach toward, you know, us reserving the right or the ability to help help organizations. Okay, I'm just keeping kind of chicken scratch notes here. So I see two things here. One is, and we did this, you know, at the last round, the committee decided to not recommend the full amount for one of the requests. Right. And we had a pretty lengthy discussion around that and why that the request just seemed sort of out of scale and scope with others in the same pool. And so I think that, and we went back, you know, in a couple instances, Dennis and I went back to two of the agencies and fleshed out a little more information. And um, so mm -hmm. I do think that, that we can do that again. And, and that was my thinking, Barb, is maybe it's not so much this question and whether they can scale up or down, but, you know, if we want to, we can go back and contact the people uh, mm -hmm. behind the grant and ask for that if that seems like a reasonable thing to do. Okay. I'll fix this later, but I, I think I've captured in my head the, the points okay. that, that you want to make on this. Yeah. I was pleased to know that in the last round that we do have some flexibility to go back and, and ask a little more details on something that we just, you know, can't quite make a decision on until we knew we had. Yeah, we which was it, which is an advantage to having a meeting, uh, say a week or so after we get the grants. So that if we see things that we want to question or get more information about, we can do that. Good point. Yeah. Okay. So this is sort of the idea of scaling either you know, in either direction and trying to figure out if, if we could partially, I mean, we did ask this question before. Um, I think it does 
put applicants a bit in a bind, but all grant applications do that to some degree. So it doesn't seem like this is too egregious. Okay, is this a collaboration? So again, this probably was Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it, this is, I think is where you get at that idea. Would you be willing, or do you know of other agencies, or would you be willing? Should I add something along those lines? No, this has been asked and answered, Maria. I, I clearly identified this and how okay. it should be. Well, does it make more sense to go down here than in the one above it? This whole idea of we may kind of match you up with other agencies if we see a fit. Okay. Lynette, yeah. do you want to go ahead and say something? Yeah, I'm wondering um, if this particular idea, and I, I love the idea of kind of trying to see if we if there's options for people to collaborate. Um, I'm wondering if that couldn't go into some of the um, messaging that we're going to be putting out about just advertising this grant program in general and just putting it as one of those just like basic um, you know just like if you know of another agency that you know you guys might want to partner up and I don't know if they could could they apply together um, but maybe we could put that in the messaging and kind of start that thought process and plant that seed mm -hmm. um, kind of from the get-go I like that idea, and I do think that that is definitely an, an area that we are going to be working on harder for the second round for the fire districts, so we could start that here. Mm -hmm. When we look at what you know was distributed, that radio ask of the fire chiefs, that was quite a group getting together to say, you know what's good for everybody, yeah. and you know the more we can encourage that, I think the 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 better our money could be used. I mean, half these these agencies and this the entire jurisdiction, they all work together or end up working together. So I think kind of planting that idea is not a bad thing up front. I like that. So we will emphasize that. I mean, we could go as far as to say we're going to prioritize, but I don't know if we're ready to do that in this grant round. But um, certainly when it comes to training and bulk equipment uh, purchasing and that kind of, you know, request, it'd be nice to see if we could spread that, spread that out. Dennis, did you have something you wanted to say or you? No. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And then we get to this question. So in the original version that you saw, it talked about prioritized community members and listed black, indigenous, people of color, differently abled, seniors, youth, non-English speakers, et cetera, to ensure that residents have equal access. I know there are definitely concerns about if you compare this to the language of the ballot issue, that um, this, this is sort of outside of that specific language. Um, however, I still, from, from the county's perspective, there's still an opportunity here to look at the idea of safe use of public trails and recreational areas in an inclusive and equitable manner. Um, Maria's been very helpful in this regard about, you know, how we might word that and how, what we might be looking for. Um, it could be something along the lines of, signage for non-English speakers it, that keeps them out of danger, not just to make it interesting, but that, you know, they don't wander off onto the wrong flat iron and get stuck. Um, it could be around the idea that having a heavy presence of rangers and people in uniforms um, can be intimidating to some people. So is there a way to show that we are responsive and that there's you know, that their risk is worth it um, should they end up being injured on a trail or something. So I just, I'm, I'm asking the committee to keep an open mind around this and to, um, you know, when we when we are looking for organizations and looking at the responses that they have is, is going beyond the sort of equality message of we respond to everybody and we rescue everybody, which I've said, to Dennis is I'm really glad that is a quality that we have in Boulder County. I'm glad that there isn't a discrimination of 
of who gets rescued and who doesn't in our county. Um, but I think even sort of going a little deeper than that, and and we'll evolve into this. And Lynette put a comment in the chat there oh. about changing. You see it? I'm going to look at it right now. Changing seniors. The word Older seniors. Adults. Thank you. Yeah. The old folks. <laughs> <laughs> Only a few of us get to call ourselves that. <laughs> this call. Okay. Yeah, we're, is there, we is there a recommendation up. to remove that language? I guess I saw the strike through and yes. thought that, okay, so maybe it's. It's, it's a moot point for this if we okay, but for go. for generally, right? Yeah, I'm I'm always open to learning. Um, so and and anything else there, you know, we don't obviously call out every um every group that might that might feel like they they don't have as equal access, but yeah. The, uh, and, and Marie, I don't know if this language sort of meets it, what you and I were kind of talking about ahead of time. Yeah, I think um, I saw that you made that change, Barb, and I think it's a pretty good direction. I mean, my, my, my mind goes in so many different ways that I actually think listing identities, you know, there's a benefit to doing it because it shows that we're thinking about it. But I think inevitably we will leave someone out. So I think two examples, even since we exchanged the other day, Barbara, that I was thinking about um, are, what if somebody's religious preferences really impact how they interact with people of different genders? Now, of course, safety is of utmost importance, but are the search and rescue folks trained to be culturally sensitive and aware? Um, what if you have somebody who's out there who's a past victim of trauma and they have a really hard time with you know, people who look or they perceive look and have a certain identity. I, I think, you know, I said the physical safety is always going to be a primary concern, mm -hmm. but you know, how, what would it look like if we had a community that really was invested in training people to be sort of culturally aware and responsive um, and, and open to different needs. And I, I think if it's broad, you know, maybe we get, we find out about challenges we don't know exist. Um, and we find, and people offer solutions because they're saying, oh, this is something that's keeping me from feeling safe on trails. Um, I mean, I think there are so, so many other issues, like do we have radios? But um, that's where, you know, some of the things I've been thinking about. Thank you, Maria. I really appreciate your work in this field and in your yeah. fluency in this, this language. Rick? I really, uh, what Maria said really just resonated with me. I know that, for instance, responses to 911 are now looking at non police, non armed uh, ways of managing situations and having social workers involved. And I'd love if there's a way to explore this area a little bit more. Kind of like our victim, or sorry, Lynette, you actually serve in this capacity, right? What do you, you're not victim advocates anymore. What is your. Uh, co-responder. So, co co so yeah, that's exactly my role. Um, so I, I mean, I don't want to just talk about it a ton right now, but certainly can talk about it as needed. Um, for sure. If, if a deputy shows up and there's trauma or anything else going on, they can ask, for us and perhaps there's, I don't know, maybe there's a way of looking at advertising that there are different options down the road, but yeah, that's that's what I do. I think it'd be really interesting to get an, an application that stretches our, our thinking along these lines and gives us an opportunity to see if, you know, we could really try something unique here in Boulder County. Yeah, and I like the idea that, you know, I, cause I'm sure, I mean, most of these folks volunteer, so they don't have access necessarily to the training that I do as a county employee um, around equity and inclusiveness. So I am really curious about what that might look like. Okay. We feel pretty good here to move on. Anybody want to have more discussion around this? We are getting to the end, folks. In fact, Let's see here. That's it. That's it. 
So one thing Dennis and I talked about is we had don't include it in the application, but I will include it in the guidelines is is what we were what we do require um, in terms of proof of use of funds after the grant has been awarded. Uh, we keep it pretty simple, not too onerous, but you know proof that the funds either something was purchased or an event was um, done or you know some some proof of how the money was spent. Um, some photos of the event so we can use those, you know, there's some suggestions that we include, we ask for things like website links and um, so that we can use those as examples going forward of successful programs. And one other thing we ask for, just a narrative, just a quick summary of how the success of it or lessons learned, that kind of thing. So that does get us to the end. Yay! Thanks everybody. I think the um that that was the big request. So going going gone. If there's any thing anybody wants us to add to this, I'm going to clean it up, get some clarification from the internal group that's needed and then uh, I can stop sharing my screen here and go back to um our presentation. It is up. Good. Okay. So all we have remaining tonight is the question about whether we can have grants kind of reviewed on a rolling basis. Um, the internal group, including the attorneys and commissioner and the sheriff, did not, does not prefer that idea. They would prefer that everybody get the applications after the deadline and we review them within a set amount of time. So that's... Um, we hope that's how we will be proceeding. Um, if we get a lot of grants, we can expand the number, the, the time that you all have to review them. So we want to make sure that there's, we don't, you know, force you to, to get them all done in a week or two days. Um, there was discussion about whether we should ahead of time decide whether, okay, we're going to look at search and rescue agencies here and trail safe, safety or prevention, safety, you know, injury prevention here. Um, it seems to be from ongoing discussions that let's look at what we get before we make any decisions ahead of time. And then there may be some obvious distinctions and pools that we want to evaluate together, but let's wait to see what we have before we do that. And then, um, as mentioned earlier, with Dennis and I backing up or moving up the date, to, to get these grants out, um, that means we'll be able to review them at our April meeting and then a, at least one meeting in May, if not two. So your homework assignment, it's not as official as the last one, but when we meet on the next meeting, which is a month from now, we're gonna look at how well are we doing? I'm gonna be doing a lot of work in the next month to get the word out about these grant programs, you know, through all the channels, that can, the county has. Um, in the meantime, if you can send me email addresses of groups that you think we should include, that would be very helpful. And then when we come back in a month, we'll talk about, I'll, I'll review with you all the th things that I've done, and then we can talk about what else might be needed. And then, um, hey, yeah. Hey, hey, Barb, do you want to, um, I can send you an email right now, but I have some ideas of like some platforms that we should get the grant application on. Great. Um, so I can just, I'll shoot you in all my extra time. Um, <laughs> I know it's asking a lot. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, and, and whichever way is easiest for you to get that information to me. Um, you know, if you had it right now, you could put it in the chat. If you want to email me, um, if you think of one and then a week later, you think of another one, just quickly shoot, but you know, it doesn't have to be formal just something real quick and I'm going to be kind of continuously reaching out to platforms, individual organizations, um, et cetera, to get, to get the word out. And then also at that, so the, so the next meeting is a month from now, the next meeting after that is a month from then staying to our fourth Tuesday of the month schedule on that April 23rd date, 
I will have already given you all of the applications that have come in. So, because it's going to close less about five days ahead of time. And maybe we can use, yeah, Rick, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I, I wonder if that might be the ideal time to meet in person mm. once we have those in front of us, because then we can compare and contrast and maybe find some partnerships and all kinds of stuff. I love that idea. I do think that, especially if we're wrangling a brand new group of applications, it might that might be the way to do it around a table. We could also have a virtual element for those who can't make it in person um, with the encouragement that as many people as possible come in person, if that works. Yeah, please. Okay. If, if most people are meeting in person and one or two are virtual, they're going to get lost. Yeah, at least kind that's of, been my at least that's been my experience. Hybrid is a tough environment. I find yeah. the people on the screen. You're like, oh, that's right, you guys are here. You know, plus we, you know, we'll have food if we're in person. You can't share food through the ah, through Zoom ah, yet. Yet a free lunch. That's right. <laughs> so, um, does does evenings? Do you think still stick with the evening time or does do, I don't know if all nine of us or 10 of us could meet during the day or not probably not and then yeah you're right so Rick we would use that April date to kind of look very broadly at the grants um, and we could even decide you know how much scoring needs to be done but we could have that sort of and if there's any other information we want to go back and ask, ask about. Yeah. We're also going to talk about scarring at the March meeting, because I do think we need some basic level of quant quantitative data to, uh, to, to, to consider. Um, Kate suggested that if we meet in uh, person, we might want to do it earlier. Oh, okay. Pick that was a suggestion. If we're going to have food. Yeah, for dinner, for sure. Uh, last time we met at the sheriff's office, which is in East Boulder. It's kind of on the left, closer to the Lafayette uh, side of Boulder. Does anyone have a preference? Um, I think you're, you're, I don't, I know, Dennis, you're up in the mountains. Rick, you're in the mountains. Um, is short of, short of meeting in Netherlands, it probably doesn't make much difference. Okay. As long as it's a, not, as long as it's options. not Erie or Eastern Longmont or yeah, yeah, okay. And parking. I mean, the problem with downtown Boulder is parking is abysmal even at night because the yeah, the all the downtown bars and theaters take up our parking spaces. All right, I think that was it for our formal. Yeah, we got through all of our slides. Well, thank you all. This was really. Very productive, and I appreciate all of the the insights and comments. I think we've gotten to a good spot. Um, okay, Doris, thank you. I've got, there's one new email address to add to my list. Anything else for the good of the order? I'll, when I uh, launch the grant program next week, I'll make sure that I copy all of you so that you're aware and you have the tools and links to spread the word. Um, social media, whatever you have access to. And then I'll be sending out a doodle poll for that April meeting and how we can get together in person. All right. 90 minutes. Thanks for hanging in there. All right. We'll see you in a month. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Thanks.